Jupiter, giant of the solar system. Saturn, the beautiful bejeweled sister. Uranus, cold, strange and forbidding. Neptune with her moon, distant and utterly unknown. These are the planets that orbit farthest of all from the sun. Closest to the Sun is Mercury, followed by Venus, and our own planet, 149.6 million kilometers from the Sun. Then comes Mars, and the first of the giants, Jupiter, and the second, Saturn. We've passed by two-thirds of the planets, but only come one-third of the way through the solar system. Then there's Uranus, Neptune, and finally Pluto, lonely occupants of the vast outer reaches, all as yet unexplored. So it was in 1977 that the Voyager spacecraft set out to photograph these remote giants and strangers. Subject one, Jupiter. revealed a gigantic ball of gas around a tiny core, a globe of hydrogen, methane and ammonia, bigger than all the other planets combined. These are real pictures taken in time-lapse. It's not the planet in rotation, but great cloud belts of weather. Hot gas driven up from the interior is light-coloured, cold gas going down is darker. Another look, with the action speeded up. The red eye, first spotted 300 years ago, isn't a storm, just a massive high-pressure area, an anticyclone. It's big enough to swallow the Earth several times over. But Voyager had other tasks. Jupiter is like a mini sun with its own solar system of moons. The probe was to fly by and record them. The first, Callisto. Packing a hefty diameter of 4,820 kilometers, Callisto would make a respectable planet. Her surface, however, was the roughest discovered, not a spot uncratered. A swing past Jupiter, and a surprising discovery, she had rings like talcum powder and visible only in scattered sunlight. But onward to the largest moon, Ganymede, like Callisto, frozen at minus 200 degrees centigrade. Diameter, 5,276 kilometers. Surface, coloured ice with fantastic grooves and the white spots of recent impact craters. And then Europa, different to the others, slightly smaller than our own moon. Its surface was young, smooth and uncratered, but finely marked like a big cracked billiard ball. The Joker was Amalthea, buffeted into a piece of flying bubble gum the size of whales. And finally, Io, photographed in profile to show its active volcanoes in white, top left. Io expands and contracts because of varying gravitational pulls from Jupiter, Europa and Ganymede. Its crust seethes with tidal forces which produce enormous eruptions and craters. One day, maybe, Io will feature in tourist brochures as the best place in the solar system to watch volcanoes. And thus, mission accomplished, Voyager left the night side of Jupiter 
thousand electric storms flashing in the clouds below. Next stop, Saturn. These are real photographs in time-lapse. And so is this. It's difficult to believe that they are not an artist's impression, but radio pictures from Voyager, truly one of the wonders of 20th century space exploration. The beguiling rings of Saturn. Apart from her rings, Saturn's most striking difference to Jupiter was the apparent lack of weather. It was obscured by a smooth haze. But change the camera filter, and there it was, penetrated in identifying color. The green spots were storms. Once identified, Voyager would lock onto and track a weather feature. those storms again. And here, jet streams in places traveling at two-thirds the speed of sound. Saturn was largely a foggy mix of hydrogen, methane, and ammonia. The dot in the circle is a star. Voyager was to use it as a reference to catalog the rings. There were thousands upon thousands of them. They stretched 275,000 kilometers across, but only a few kilometers deep. Ice particles covered in dust, as big as motor cars. change of course for a look at Saturn's moons. First S1 and S3, tiny twin satellites that jostle each other and probably even swap orbits. S3 in close-up and there the vertical shadow of one of Saturn's rings. Enceladus, a super reflective ice ball. Density like water, diameter 500 kilometers. Before Voyager, Saturn was thought perhaps to have a dozen moons. As with the rings, astronomers had it wrong. The probe revealed well over 20. Tethys, innermost of the big moons with a diameter of more than a thousand kilometers, pure ice. Diony, a touch larger, but heavier. The surface, millions of icy craters. Rhea, at a distance wispy and icy, in close-up, big and extremely cratered. And Titan, greatest of all the moons, virtually a planet in its own right. The surface is shrouded in the only nitrogen-rich atmosphere yet discovered. Um, on Earth. Hyperion, a flying mountain. Iapetus, once featured as the Stargate in 2001 Space Odyssey, but revealed by Voyager as a frozen, lifeless rock. And lastly, Mimas, with its gigantic crater as tall as Mount Everest. Our lunar launching pad for a last glimpse of Saturn.
All being well, the Uranus encounter will be in January 1986. A sweep past a green globe oddly tilted sideways with respect to the sun. Three and a half years later, Voyager should reach Neptune, skimming her by a mere seven and a half thousand kilometers. And on past her moon Triton, before heading forever into the galactic void.